My next novel is called A Town Like Ours and it's to be published by Aleph in May. It's a, the story is set in an imagined place in Karnataka where uh, in a small town a, a woman who has just uh, who is actually a prostitute and who's just passed her prime days is uh, telling the story and uh, through her we hear how this town was once a village in her younger days it was a village and it is now morphed into a town and through the story she talks about she we realize the pain and the uh, the pressures uh, and the breakdown of tradition and culture the way they affect the people who have lived in the village and who still consider it to be a village uh, there are four main characters in the story and uh, there is one uh, Saroja who is fleeing from the scene of her crime along with her son and she joins up with a man and they begin to live together and they live in a taxi along with the, his own little girl uh, somewhere along the way we realize we come to hear about the story through the through this woman who uh, uh, we hear that the children who are being born in this town are born with white hair and not black they develop white hair and uh, there is a great mystery about this uh, many people think it is the blessings of the goddess the goddess pingakshi resides in the in that particular village in the temple temple to goddess pingakshi and which means the red eyed goddess and they think it's her blessing some think it is her curse and but they are uh, willing to accept it and this has been there for about 15 or 16 years and scientists also come out of curiosity and they want to find out if there is any other reason and they eventually trace it to a pesticide that is being produced by a person who belonged to the village who became later became a businessman and he started small by selling agarbatis and he graduated on and started producing uh, pesticide and it is from the pesticide that contaminates the water that the children begin to get white haired and we have characters in the book who are white haired and those who are black haired and uh, the story just moves on um, actually through this uh, there is one part of the story is actually about these characters and what happens to them the sadness of their lives um, and uh, the other is about the whole village itself the village itself as if it has a voice and this woman is speaking it yes uh. and she lives in a small room in the temple and uh, she has got a very very tiny window through which she looks out and she talks to the men she knew you know because the all of all the people know her and she has had obviously many many liaisons and those people feed her with the stories and the rest of it she sees through her window and uses her imagination so the whole story is sort of a mix of all this yes you could say that i am i was trying to see how she could speak like the voice of the village you know it's like i make her speak as if she herself is the village she is burdened by the sorrows of the other people She's, as she begins to talk about it, she's really, you know, uh, weeping for them and she's telling the story. It's not that it's all sad, but it, is, uh, it, it really is poignant in the sense that when a village changes and becomes a town and the, uh, the memories people hold and of, of the past and the things they lose, they think they've gained a lot in terms of eco economics and a lot of people don't even know what is lost. But then steadily things are lost and they are, they are just going to be wiped out forever. So she is sort of recording it. In a way it is trying to show how you are helpless against an onslaught of this nature. That it can affect people in any way. Suppose tomorrow it was to happen. Suppose tomorrow there was a substance that was changing children's hair from black to white. What do you do? Suppose it is <coughs> children trapped in a little town. It is going to take years and years for somebody to take action about a thing like this. Because as it, very, as it happens in this book, the businessman is by then very powerful. And he is able to pressurize everyone into thinking that nothing is proved, you know. So this thing moves on and the children continue to be born with white hair. So it becomes a place where there is uh, white hair from the young and white hair from the old. So the black haired people are reduced to a narrow ribbon. And in the same way, the stream in that um, 
village ha which was once full of very clean water is now black and that black water itself is very very scarce so that is also a thin black ribbon you know so the whole of the you know the white is squeezing and making it into a yes it is actually a reflection of what's happening all over the country and perhaps all over the world very quietly villages are being sucked in into forming towns and slowly the the, the village is disappearing i think there's going to be a next generation who would probably never have seen a village you know it's going to happen and along with this there are there is a story taking place there are Uh, this this woman who ran away from the scene of her crime which i don't want to expose she loses this second family as well the two children and that man the has the the illegal husband uh, also disappear and uh, so the story has a mystery to what happens to them and why did they disappear that is another story that she yes very much i am a village girl and i was born in a village and grew up and studied and you know love my village life and all my stories feed in, feed from feed off those days you know uh, and years and i still i even now i have always worked in small rural areas so my life belongs there so i feel the loss i see it every day so probably i am the person in a way yeah i am the one who's sitting there telling the story um, you know it, it it's it's something i see every day yes.